Welcome back scholars. This video is going to be about colligative properties, specifically the theory behind these colligative properties. And these relate to solutions and colligative properties are properties that only depend on the amount of dissolved substance. and not specifically what it is, although the amount of ions could certainly be influenced by the identity of the compound. For instance, something like sodium chloride would dissolve to form two ions, ideally in solution, whereas something like Calcium chloride would dissolve into three ions, something like aluminum hydroxide would dissolve into four ions for however much of it is actually soluble in solution. And so these properties only depend on the amount of dissolved substance. And to start for the theory, Let's jump back to think about a pure liquid and let's think about something called vapor pressure. So here we have a container. This container, let's say, con consists of water and those water molecules are floating around and a few of them are at the surface of the water. At any given point in time, if we think about the speeds of those water molecules, yeah, just speed and uh, frequency or abundance of those, then we have something that looks like a Boltzmann distribution for those molecules. And as you may recall, there will be a most probable speed an average speed, and a root mean squared speed. And even though we looked at this for gases, this is also how molecules move in liquids, but there will be some speed, some minimum speed over which these molecules need to be moving to be able to leave the solution. And so, only a very small number of molecules is going to have this minimum speed, which again, remember, is really going to be related to kinetic energy. Only a small number of them are going to have this minimum speed necessary to evaporate. And out of all of those molecules, that very small number of molecules that have the minimum energy, only a very small number of those are going to be at the surface of the liquid. It does no good for this molecule down here to have enough energy to leave if it's stuck at the bottom of the solution. And so the intermolecular forces, the minimum speed or minimum energy necessary to evaporate is all gonna be related back to the vapor pressure of liquids and as we increase the temperature of the liquid and we shift this distribution more towards the right, if I draw that with a different color for our liquid, then we have way more molecules now above that minimum energy that are now able to evaporate again if they are at the surface of the solution. And so this vapor pressure for a liquid we could say would be known as say P naught. And this is going to be the vapor pressure at some temperature. And as these water molecules or other molecules of liquid get into the vapor phase, the gas phase, they're not technically called a gas at this point because it's above the boiling point, but they do exist in that gas phase or that vapor phase. 
this would also then be the partial pressure of the molecules of this liquid in the gas phase. So thinking back and connecting this back to something like Dalton's law. Now where colligative properties come into play here is that if I put some other substance here in the water at the surface that is also spread out throughout the rest of the solution, then one of the water molecules that would have been at the surface of the solution now gets turned into one of these other things I've been dissolving. And so now some of that water that was able to evaporate before is no longer able to do so. And this comes in to the idea here of colligative properties. The more you dissolve into the solution, the less water there will be at the surface so even though you might still have the same number of molecules with the minimum speed or kinetic energy necessary to evaporate, you're going to have even, few of them, even fewer of them at the surface, and so even fewer of them will be able to evaporate. So the vapor pressure of a solution, this vapor pressure at some temperature is gonna get multiplied by some fraction, and for now let's just call it F, and that's going to equal, equal my vapor pressure of my solution, P sub S. We'll come back in a later video and we'll go over the, these specific equations more specifically. So the general idea here, at least with evaporation, is that the more substance you have at the surface, the fewer solvent molecules there are there that can then go into the gas phase through evaporation. Now the effect that this has on boiling is all due to the simple fact that these particles that are dissolved in the solution have basically replaced the water molecules at the surface. And to think about boiling, we first need to define the boiling point. And the boiling point is when the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. And so if the vapor pressure is already at equal to the atmospheric pressure for the solution, for the solvent rather, then it's going to be boiling at whatever that temperature was. But remember that this vapor pressure for something like water is going to be relatively low, especially at room temperature. So if we're at 25 degrees Celsius, this vapor pressure for water is on the order of let's say five tor, whereas the atmosphere is about 760 tor. And of course that depends on the weather that day and what the actual atmospheric pressure is. What this means though, if our vapor pressure of the pure water is so low at 25 degrees Celsius, the only way for us to increase our vapor pressure so it equals the atmospheric pressure is for us to raise the temperature of that liquid. As we raise the temperature of that liquid and we increase the number of molecules with the minimum speed or energy necessary to evaporate, then more of that pure water can evaporate, can, will move into the vapor phase. And when there's an equal amount trying to move into the vapor phase and create a pressure that's equal to the atmosphere, then that is the definition of the boiling point. So now consider a solution, or let me say the temperature, boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. So now if I have a solution and I've dissolved some material into this solution and it's taking the place of the water molecules and it has reduced the vapor pressure at some temperature, now my, pure, my solution versus my pure water, my solution might only have a vapor pressure of three torr. So that's only a little bit smaller than five, but what that means is that my boiling point of my solution, and I'm gonna abbreviate boiling point as BP, so the boiling point of solution, it's going to require me to raise the temperature even more. I'm gonna to have to get even more water molecules with more energy because some of those water molecules that were at the surface of the pure liquid are no longer there. 
If I've got fewer molecules at the surface, then my vapor pressure is going to be lower. So even if I raise this water, this solution up to 100 degrees Celsius, I still won't be at the boiling point because my solution vapor pressure is going to be less than my original vapor pressure, at least for most solutions. And so for the boiling point of the solution it is going to be higher than the boiling point of the solvent. And this is going to be true for almost all solutions. And so what we see here in terms of our colligative properties so far, let's come up with a quick summary, is that more solute gives lower vapor pressure which in turn requires a higher boiling point. And the whole reason why it requires a higher boiling point is because we're trying to match the atmospheric pressure but the vapor pressure of the solution at 100 degrees Celsius is still going to be less than the vapor pressure of the pure liquid. If the pure liquid boils at 100 degrees Celsius, well then the solution is going to need a little bit of a higher temperature to be able to boil. And it might only be 101 or 102 degrees Celsius, but it's still going to be a higher boiling point than for the pure liquid. And so we see this with vapor pressure and boiling point. And this is really the easiest one to see, to think about, and to think about the consequences with these colligative properties. The other two colligative properties that we see are for freezing point and osmotic pressure. So freezing point first. Here's my solution. And my water molecules, because of the kinds of intermolecular forces they have, because of hydrogen bonding, my water molecules would really like to be able to make tiny little hexagonal crystals. And if they can make those hexagonal crystals and they can be very well arranged and very well ordered, so here's a hexagon, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, as long as those are connected. Here's another hexagon, one, two, three, four, five, I need something else down here, don't I? Six, they look, starting to look a little funky. These are going to be able to come together at a specific temperature, in the case of water, that is zero degrees Celsius. But if I put something into here that disrupts the formation of those hydrogen bonds, then I'm going to have to remove even more energy from this system to force them into this repeating pattern. And so freezing point decreases as solute increases. And osmotic pressure is related to the word osmosis, which thinking back to biology is the movement of water from high water concentration to low water concentration. And that's what these brackets mean. These brackets technically mean molarity of, if I put an X inside, molarity of X. So high molarity of water to low molarity of water. But remember, what's molarity the unit for? Concentration.
So often it's used as a shorthand to show concentration of something. So osmosis is movement of water from high concentration to low concentration. And so here's a membrane and here's water on one side of that membrane. And here's water with something dissolved in it on the other side of the membrane. Now, because the water on this side of the membrane has something dissolved in it, which side is the water going to try to move to through osmosis? Which side has a lower concentration of water right now? It is this side. So the water flow is going to go this way. Water osmosis. And what that's going to cause to happen, assuming this is a fixed volume, a fixed space with this membrane, is that now there's going to be some sort of a pressure on this membrane because there's going to be more water over here, more solution over here. This pressure is called the osmotic pressure. So the side with more stuff dissolved, more solute, is going to have a higher osmotic pressure. So more solute, more osmotic pressure. And of course, thinking back to biology and our own cells, our own cells, our own blood is not pure water. They have salts, they have sugars dissolved in them. And so all of the cells, all of the fluids in our body have an osmotic pressure associated with them. If you suddenly started drinking a lot of pure water and you drank too much pure water, you would actually decrease the salt concentration in your blood, which would end up making the inside of your cells have a higher osmotic pressure, which would mean that your cells would expand and if they expanded too much, then that's when your cells would burst. So this is it for theory. This is just a little bit of the background. This is how each of these four types of colligative properties change based on the amount of dissolved substance. Again, vapor pressure of a solution goes down as the concentration of solute goes up. The vapor pressure of the pure liquid is related to how much of it is able to evaporate at a given temperature. The boiling point is defined as the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid or the solution equals the atmospheric pressure. Because of this, a solution that has a lower vapor pressure than the liquid is going to require a higher boiling point for the solution than for the pure solvent. More solute gives lower vapor pressure, which in turn requires a higher boiling point. More solute also disrupts the freezing process. It disrupts, disrupts the formation of a crystal lattice in the case of water, which means that we have to remove even more energy from the solution. So the freezing point, which remember is a temperature, will decrease as solute increases. And osmotic pressure, which is the fourth colligative property that we're gonna think about, is based off of the amount of solute in solution. And the more solute that's there, the higher the osmotic pressure. Come back for the second video, which will show you some of the equations for these and explain some of the terms and explain how you can figure out what you will get specifically based off of the salts that you're working from.